Every search you make, every click you take, they'll be watching you. Tired of companies like Google and Facebook watching everything you do online? There's actually a simple solution. DuckDuckGo. It's an all-in-one privacy app with a built-in private search engine, web browser, one-click data clearing, email protection, and more. All for free. Download the app today and get the most comprehensive privacy protection with a push of a button. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. Hello, everyone. This is Rosie Tran, and welcome to Stupid Sexy Privacy, a Weibo.tv special report sponsored by our friends at DuckDuckGo. You may have heard my voice at the end of every episode on Weibo.tv. I'm the one asking you to leave a review. Which, by the way, I hope you've done, right? You've left us a review? Okay, great. Unless you're lying. <clears throat> well, I'm a lot more than a voice. I'm also Weibo.tv's intrepid reporter, and over the course of this miniseries, I'm going to share with you short, actionable tips you can use to protect your privacy. These tips were sourced by our fearless leader, he really hates when we call him that, BJ Mendelson. BJ, for those of you who may not know, is the author of the book Privacy and How We Get It Back, a book that was published in the before times. This means before COVID. BJ is currently writing a sequel called How to Protect Yourself from Fascists and Weirdos. So everything we're going to hear in this miniseries is the most up-to-date information he's researched, bringing us into 2023 and beyond. Throughout the series, you're also going to hear from some special guests and experts in the information security field. You hear that sound? That means it's time for today's privacy tip. Last week, we mentioned how properly protecting yourself in the 21st century costs money. This is especially true for women. That's why we've highlighted the importance of a hidden camera detector. You want to use your hidden camera detector to sweep hotels, Airbnb, or a stranger's bedroom for any recording devices. We know. This feels very tinfoil hatty, but as we said before, police and our legal system often fail in protecting women from creeps and weirdos. So to follow up, this week we're going to talk about breakups. In particular, let's talk about what you should do if you're ending a relationship. One where you shared a device with a partner or spouse? Now, there are a lot of things you can do to protect yourself, but the simplest and easiest for most people is to purchase all new devices. The problem is, you can't cheap out here. If you buy something refurbished, you weren't the first person to touch the device. There's nothing wrong with buying refurbished devices. In fact, in most cases, we recommend it as a great way to save money. But if you're concerned about your privacy, it's important to get a brand new device. And even more important, you have to make sure you're the only person to have touched a device upon its arrival at your home. For example, if you have a friend you trust, you can give them cash and have them purchase a new laptop and smartphone for you. Just make sure they don't open it up. That's something only you can do. What kind of laptop should you get? We recommend getting a new Apple computer. While there are more secure alternatives, for most people in most instances, an Apple laptop will work just fine. But you'll need to take some steps to secure your device. We've already talked about using 1Password in our first episode, and we've included a link below in the show notes if you still haven't picked that up. You're also going to want to set up a VPN using ProtonVPN. Use the DuckDuckGo browser and grab yourself an antivirus like Clam AV. We'll talk about each of those things in our next episode. For now, you'll also want to make sure your file vault is turned on, as this will encrypt your files and help secure them on your new device. While you're there in your system settings to turn on file vault, make sure you have also activated your firewall. And we hope this goes without saying, but with your new device, make sure it's password protected at all times. Nobody should have access to your new device without your permission. One more thing this week. iCloud is not your friend. Don't use it. So while you're in your system settings on your new device, make sure you're not backing up anything to Apple servers. Put all of your stuff onto an external hard drive instead. This will keep important photos and files safe, just in case something ever happens to your new laptop. While Apple is great at a lot of things, its track record with securing things like iCloud leaves a lot to be desired. Just ask Jennifer Lawrence. If you own an iPhone, use iMazing instead to move your files safely onto your new laptop and then onto your new external hard drive. We've included a link to iMazing in the show notes below. Are you still listening? We hope so because we have a special surprise. Back in 2017, BJ's first book on privacy came out. It was called Privacy and How We Get It Back. 
Broadway actor Roger Wayne did the narration for the audio edition of the book. Our editor, Andrew, was nice enough to go through the audiobook and pull out the sections that are still very much worth sharing with you today. So, if you stick around and listen to this miniseries, after every privacy tip, you'll hear another excerpt from BJ's book, Privacy and How We Get It Back. Take it away, Roger! 6. Your data, but not your choice. Where your privacy is concerned, it's not just the data you submit or what gets scooped up by a hidden service like Octazen that should worry you. Personal privacy is a serious matter. However, as we move toward more and more items in and around our homes and on our bodies having their own internet connection, it's important to keep in mind that each of those nearly 9 billion devices are collecting and transmitting data about you too. And this data presents another opportunity for the violation of your privacy and the potential use of your data against you. In theory, there shouldn't be a problem with owning and using something like an Apple Watch or an Amazon Echo. But like they once said on The Simpsons, in theory, communism works. The idea of an Internet of Things might seem completely foreign, and that's okay. Much like the cloud and big data, the Internet of Things is really just a fancy name to describe Internet-connected tools that find their way into your home, your body, and your city. The term can also be used to describe those awesome refrigerators that tell you when your milk has expired, and even go to Amazon to order more milk for you. Even if self-stocking Frigidaires aren't your style, some of you might be driving around in cars right now that are internet-enabled, or have devices installed in your cars by your insurance companies, with your consent, to report your travel data back to those companies in exchange for a discount on your premium. In keeping with using Simpsons quotes in this chapter, oh, they have the internet on computers now. At the time, in 1997, that joke was hilarious because you could only access the internet from a desktop computer. But today, and going forward into the future, it's reasonable to believe that more than a few people would be surprised to learn that the Internet on all their devices could also be accessed with a computer. Scary, I know, but we're getting there. I was just told recently that movies from the 1980s qualify as classic movies. So, I'm not kidding when I tell you that someday soon, kids are going to be surprised to learn that the Internet is also available on their computer, assuming they even own a computer at all. That means you have to take pretty seriously the concept of everything in your house, on your body and in your neighborhood, being connected to the Internet. That's no longer a discussion for the future. It's a discussion for now. And remember, there are sensors and cameras everywhere now, too. That's not hysteria or science fiction. It's fact. I'm a Facebook hipster. I then deleted my Facebook account and then re-upped it in 2005 and have not been able to get off the stupid thing since. So so why can't you get off? So wh- <laughs> what are your... <laughs> you guys. The award-winning Smashing Security Podcast, hosted by Graham Cluley and Carol Terrio each week. It takes an irreverent look at cybersecurity and online privacy. Helping you find out what's happening with your data. Find it in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and all good podcast apps, or at smashingsecurity.com. It's not all filth. might imagine that a lot of issues surface when talking about data collection and privacy where this new frontier is concerned. For the sake of clarity, I will refer to the data collected by most of your personal devices as dynamic data, because that data changes over time. So we're not talking static data here, i.e. data that won't change like your social security number. Dynamic data refers to information that closely reflects your everyday reality. In other words, the food you order through Seamless, the series you watch on Netflix, your house temperature, your heart rate and pulse. These things are dynamic. One example, every morning for the past month, I've had to take my blood pressure, pop some medication, and take my blood pressure again. My blood pressure changes, hopefully, and I have to log this data to give to my cardiologist. I know, so sexy. My blood pressure is a great example of dynamic data, 
And since I log my blood pressure into a Google Sheet, Google now has a running record of the changes in my blood pressure. The data is dynamic. It's different a half hour later than what it was before. These are some questions that should come to your mind when thinking about the dynamic data you produce. What if that data is intercepted by a third party? Who pays to store all that dynamic data? What company wants to store this data? What decisions are going to be made with that data? Who owns it? What do they plan to do with it? Is my data encrypted? Is my data hosted on a secure server whose software is updated regularly? Are you in good hands? A great example of a company interested in dynamic data is Nest. The Alphabet-owned division that explained it takes privacy seriously. Despite having experienced a security breach involving your data, sharing other data with Google when they were still independent from them, and having numerous rumored data-sharing partnerships with other companies interested in your data as well. Not to mention the Nest Cam, the always-on camera that you can access remotely, which, by the way, is also storing that video footage for you to access later in the cloud. Where is that footage being stored and who else has access to it? Even if you're not overly concerned about the Nest thermostat, you might want to be concerned about that camera, especially now that Nest has rolled out a version of the camera that's made to be placed outside your home in the name of security. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with these products. I'm just saying you should be mindful of who has access to the information those products are taking in, especially if that information is going to be used against you, which is one of the few other credible reasons out there as to why you should care about all this privacy stuff to begin with. You may enjoy the free stuff now, but the use of your data by all these other parties is certain to bite you in the ass later, and not in a sexy way. Most things people hate about the internet comes from a lack of privacy, like those creepy ads that make you think your phone is listening to you. DuckDuckGo is an all-in-one privacy app that can help you with that. It's your internet browser with private search, tracking blocker, encryption, and even built-in email protection, all for free. Just go to DuckDuckGo.com to learn more. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. Thank you for listening to Stupid Sexy Privacy, a Weiwo.tv special report. Do you need a privacy audit? To help find new episodes of Weiwo.tv, BJ is offering one-on-one -on -one privacy audits. These are private, one-time consultations that are conducted securely through Signal. During the audit, BJ will walk you through all 23 steps from our special report to help you better protect your privacy. Now, just to be clear, we're going to share all 23 steps with you here, for free, in this podcast mini-series. Because these are all tactics you can use right now to help protect yourself from fascists and weirdos, and we want to help keep everyone safe. These privacy audits are meant for people who may need some extra help implementing these steps or have additional questions that they want answered. You can have your one-on-one -on -one privacy audit with BJ by sending an email to bjmendelson at duck.com. That email again is bjmendelson at duck.com. And we'll see you next time right here on weiwo.tv, right? Right?